Uh, so let's pray. God, we thank you um, that actually you just even made it to, to be here, Lord. We thank you for your love, for your care, and for just being a good God to us. Lord, I pray that you may open the ears of our hearts, that we may hear, that we may be of that company that you said that they have ears and they have had. They have eyes and they have seen. Lord, sharpen our minds, Lord, that we may have a sound mind. This we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, There's something I find interesting about the church today. Okay? And I want to ask a question. Most of the time when you hear the term Pentecostal, what do you see? You see chaos, right? That's the that's idea. No, no, no. Let's be honest. You hear Pentecostal, you, 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 you immediately imagine either people rolling on the ground or everyone speaking in tongues at the same time, right? That's what you imagine, right? But there's a question I like to ask. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. So, first, where is the power? Second, where is the love? Third, where is the sound mind? You cannot, you cannot say that you've received the spirit of God and be mad. Does that make sense? You can't act insane and say it is because I have received the gift of the Spirit, which is what most of us say. So we must then restore the soundness of mind. So you kind of make sense? We must return to what I call God logic. Okay? God logic works like this. Okay? If God created the heavens and the earth, okay, and before Adam fell, put Adam on earth, it can therefore not be that God's plan is to put Adam in heaven. It can't be. You understand? It is would be akin to saying that God made a mistake and he changed his mind. Okay? Now, this is the logic we must return to. Okay? Uh, logic uh, such as uh, if the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of sins, okay, it cannot be then used to cleanse the road, nor give you journey masses. Mm, Sindio. Because we know that the road has not sinned. Okay? Uh, roads do not hold confessions. You understand? And therefore, going to God in prayer saying, I plead the blood over my life, or I cover my wife with the blood is not a sensible request. Because the blood is not a force field. Correct? So we must return to reason. Am I making sense? Okay? But there's one element of reason I want us to consider. Now, last week we talked about beware the dog, correct? And we talked about returning to your vomit, okay? We talked about the fear of light. We talked about the fear of water, correct? Because many Christians today are afraid of the truth, okay? And I know you may think you're not afraid of the truth until you do something wrong. Mm, I'll give you an example. 
if we say Steve Rowe got a promotion, okay, and we say that here, are we rumoring about Steve? Is it a rumor? If we say Steve got fired, now it's a rumor. No, it's not. You see, a rumor at first instance has to be a lie. Correct? That's why it's called spreading a rumor. It has to be false news that is propagated. So if Steve o has been fired and we say it, we're not saying a rumor. Now, the reason it hurts you is because you're proud. Hey. You understand? The element of pride is what you use on your Instagram. So when you're on holiday, we get 60 pictures. When you're having Gideri for lunch, no pictures. Okay? When you're having Gideri, where is hashtag blessed? Hakuna <laughs> bundles. <laughs> so, it is the idea that for some reason you need to project success and hide your failures. That's, that's how it is. And that's what we've accepted to be Christianity. Because literally from how we dress when we go to church, you can tell we are all pretenders. Because how is it you have a Sunday best? <laughs> because if you were genuine, then you'd come to church the way you are. You know, one of the most interesting things I find in conversation is the fact that people find it very hard to believe that I'm a preacher. For the simple reason that if you meet me, I do not speak Christianese. In fact, I cannot remember the last time I greeted someone and said, Buana Sikiwe, unless I was joking. <laughs> because how is that a greeting? You understand? In fact, if we are to follow the Bible, then we might land ourselves in bigger trouble because it says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Eh. <laughs> Do you understand that the whole idea of how we've presented Christianity is that there is the real me but when I show up, I am all prim and proper. Sindio. Now, last week, we, we, we did an experiment, and, and I chose not to continue the experiment on the WhatsApp group because I realized there are many people who were not there in class, and I need them to listen to class before they understand what it is that we're doing. But for those of you who are here, we received uh, pieces of paper that had written on them uh, offering. They were not offerings. They were <laughs> we, re we received an offering of the, of the sins of people's hearts. And what I found interesting okay, is the shame with which people wrote. Okay? Uh, uh, someone would say, I'm so bad I've slept with 20 women. And when I read that, I wished I could respond to them and say, I know a few people who are eating 800. And they're not 600 years old. Oh, it's easy. It's easy, by the way. It's easy. Let me do the math for you. There are 52 weeks in a year, right? Okay. If this guy averages three different chicks in a week, Okay? 
times 52 is how many? 150. He does that for five years. I don't know one, I don't know two, I don't know three, I don't know four, I know about seven men like that. Yes, and they are very saved now. So how bad are you? If we are to consider badness by the frequency of sin. So what I found interesting is someone else would say that my guilt is I aborted once. The next confession you read, they aborted thrice. So what are we going to feel guilty about? I cheated on my spouse. I got so many like that. Ah, I had a lesbian tryst. I think I'm bisexual. All those things common. You know what the Bible says? Nothing has overcome you except that which is common to man. The only place where we think that sin is uncommon is the place where forgiven sinners gather. It's called church. Which is funny. The very definition of your Christianity is your what? A forgiven sinner. Then we act shocked the most at sin. Yet the definition, your, your, your pass mark at the door was the realization that you're a what? This is why I keep telling people we cannot teach doctrines like abuse of grace. Because the nature of sin is that it's repetitive. That's how sin is. You understand? And the truth of the matter you will live long enough to know that most of the time sin just drops off you. Jesus didn't give you a six-step program to being sinless. Did you realize that? There is no Alcoholics Anonymous in the Bible. Guys, are we together? But the first thing we must learn is we must learn to walk in the it says if you walk in the light then you will have fellowship one with another in other words that there can no longer be a fellowship that is done this way come I show you fake fellowship buenas if you are dada how are you Tangu tukutana nimekuwa na ushuhuda. Vida yangu nimeishikilia. Bado Yesu ni bwana. That's not fellowship. That's not fellowship. Because at the end of that conversation, thanks, what exactly do you know about this person? They know Swahili. <laughs> okay? So the only thing you know is this purported Ushuda, which if you ask, they will tell you, he has done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. So even that testimony is constrained by the amount of information you have. Sindio. But it says if we must have fellowship, then we must begin to walk in the light. Now, what is the light? The light, David says, when he writes Psalms from about 27 to 40. And he says, when I hid my sin, my bones wasted away. But when I exposed it, I received healing. Okay? Okay? So the question must be asked, how often do we obey the scripture that says confess your sins? 
<laughs> when was the last time you confessed your sins? When was the last time you confessed your sins? And please understand, I'm not asking about the secret meeting you have with yourself and God in the toilet crying, saying, hey, I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. Oh my God. I mean, when was the last time that we came into the light? You see, coming into the light, by the way, is not the idea of stopping doing bad things. This is what mistake people make. John 3, 17, 18, 19, and 20 explore the idea of light. And it says, those who will not believe in me do not want to come into the light so that their works may be seen and reproved. Please understand. In other words, you walk into the light so that the dark areas of your life may be seen. This is what we signed up for in Christianity. So the flip of exiting the dog phase, number one has to be the light. Are we together? You see, to be a lion, you have to be brave. And the first bravery you must have is the bravery to be you. Because most of the people we interact with are not themselves. You're not you. So we cannot discuss you being a lion when you're busy hiding in the wolf's cave. Hello? If you cannot embrace identity, both good and bad, then you're not yet ready to become a lion. Hmm, I want to give you an example. Imagine you're Paul. In fact, imagine you're Saul. Okay? And you've just successfully killed Stephen. Okay? And many others after him. Then on your way to Damascus, you get saved. Okay? Now, can you imagine going to church and meeting Stephen's wife? Can you imagine Paul standing there and saying, I'm saved now. You're my brother. How much courage did that take? And by the way, I want you to understand one thing. I know you imagine, in your modern imagination, you think that Pharisees were very far removed from the church. Not at that point. The church was a sect of the Pharisee cult. Because what had happened is these people who used to go to the synagogue and temple suddenly started believing in a Jesus. But they still went to the temple. So in essence, who had killed Stephen? It was a member of your synagogue. So can you imagine if one of us kills the other and they come back after two days? How many are forgiving them? Hmm. <laughs> Better question. How many of you, after committing murder, will still return to the temple? Yeah. Because, see, we like saying David is a man after God's own heart. 
after committing murder and adultery and trying to cover it up for at least nine months and a baby. Okay? So let's say even possibly two years. When the prophet comes and judges him, where does David go? Where does David go? To the temple. He goes to the presence of God. Let us remember during David's time, the Shekinah presence of God was in the temple. So how many of you would dare after sinning go to see God face to face? Do you want to be lions? Why do you think it says boldly approach the throne of grace? Boldly. If you are approaching a throne called grace, what do you need? Grace. When you get there, what did, it, what did the writer promise you? Mercy. How do you approach the throne boldly to obtain mercy? Doesn't make sense. Because typically, when you need mercy from your parents, you approach your parent timidly. With puppy eyes. Which my daughter is practicing, by the way. And then she tells you, Daddy, I'm giving you puppy eyes. <laughs> but consider what it says. It says, approach the throne of grace boldly. Why are you approaching it boldly? Because it is your right. Because Jesus died. And Jesus died so that there could be light in your life. Light has a singular purpose. To find darkness and kick it out. So, a lot of the time, why we cannot move into the lion phases of our life is because we do not have the boldness to approach God. Because how many times do you hear Christians say that I have sinned, so worship him in Meacha three weeks? That's what Christians do. Okay? The Christians watching me who are like, by the way, let's go in the class because I've sinned. Sindio. But there is a second effect. Okay? And I've read this scripture before, so I will not uh, refer to it. Peter, Second Peter chapter 1 says, Make every effort to make your calling and, elec and election sure, for in doing this you will never fall. Meaning, why do you fall? Because your calling and election is not. But you cannot accept your calling and election if you are still hiding in darkness. Because this is what your mind tells you. When God tells you to preach, okay, says I've called you to be a preacher, and you remember your sins, how many are going to preach? Zero. <laughs> Do you see how these things work? This is lion phase one. So for as long as you are hiding in darkness, what happens is there's a duality in your life. You know what God has asked you to do, but you feel very unworthy. Okay? This is part of the problem why you can't share the masterclass video on your page. Because people will ask, Hey, you say, Ah, it has happened to me. Because you're afraid that the person you are with will say, And then you're afraid they'll call you a pretender. And then to top it all off, then God gives you a mission. You, have you ever been drunk and you're saved? It's a very dangerous thing to do. 
Because when you're drunk and saved, what usually happens is you start hearing God. And then you're in the bar and you have a prophetic word <laughs> for the person equally drunk. <laughs> huh? So you're sitting there in the bar and you're wondering, do I tell you? Do I pray for you? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> if you go and meet someone who's sick and they're sneezing and God tells you I want to heal that man and you're drunk. What would you do? <laughs> uh, to do what? <laughs> what would you do? You pray silently. But, but do you understand the questions? Because for as long as there is darkness in your life, stage one of being a lion cannot exist. You need to get to the stage where Paul got to. It's like, by the way, Miliwaua, na munga menisamea. You know, do you know when Paul writes and he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus, do you know how offensive that must sound to someone who's never forgiven him? But why is Paul the most prolific of the apostles? It is because he who is forgiven of much loves much. So can I tell you a secret? The depths you have fallen to are only, are only proof of how much God can love you and use you. You see, if you are a Pharisee, you're in trouble. Because the Pharisee dimension will tell you the amount of righteousness you've had tells you how much God can use you. Hello. But Jesus says, he who is forgiven of much loves much. And Paul is testament. Paul He's a murderer. There's no other way to call him. Yet Paul gave his life for the gospel. So stage one of Tim Lion, step out of the darkness and into the light. Be you. Let us know. You see, When you are exposed in the newspapers, don't let us be shocked. You understand? When you are exposed, let us say, oh, by the way, that's our boy. That's our girl. Because you are walking in the light. That's the only time we can call master class family. Before then, we are just Instagrammers liking each other's lives. Double tap. That's all we do in Christianity. Because in Christianity today, everyone is doing well. Hashtag blessed, hashtag God fast, hashtag fit to palace. Godspeed, you know those things. <laughs> Me, I always wonder these Christians, they never have bad days. I love we hashtag Pete to Palace, Wapi Pitcher Pete. <laughs> Do 
you understand? So we cannot talk about, let me tell you, we cannot even build a Christ-like community. If, please open the windows, this place is getting hotter and hotter by the second. Thank you. Okay. So we cannot even start talking about you being a lion when we have no idea who you are. Are you together? You see. I want you to imagine what will happen in your life if for two minutes someone collected your dirtiest secrets and put them on Facebook. If your life would end, you're still a dog. Are we together? Because I want you to ask yourself a question. Why is it that David continued to be king? Why is it? Guys, why is it? You see, I have problems with churches. That now you kick out ushers, Sunday school teachers, pastors based on what you find them doing wrong. My question is simple. Why didn't God kick David out? You see, you need to understand. The only way to save someone is this. It says the anointing breaks the... So what do you need to get someone? What do you do to get someone delivered? You make them work in the anointing. That's what Peter is saying. He's saying, your calling and election will keep you from from falling. Guys, am I making sense? So the biggest lie you are told is you need to fix yourself before you can serve God. Biggest lie. Actually, what needs to happen is you need to serve God because he's already forgiven you. And because you're already forgiven, you can share your testimony. Guys, are we together? Because a testimony cannot be how you bought a car. It's not a testimony. Are we together? A testimony is, by the way, I like my drink. Guys, let me tell you, Friday nights when you try and call me, I'm usually hiding. But Muritwine ba. Muritwine, because you can't go to Kiza and uh, what's the other place, B Club, because hashtag blessed will be embarrassed. So, Komushoroine ba. See, that's what we do. So can we first agree that we are coming into the light? Are we together? Now when you come into the light, you know I can start teaching. Can you imagine I've not started? <laughs> when you come into the light, the mistake many people make is they think the challenge they are supposed to overcome in their lives is sin. That's what you are told. So we embark on a 10-step program. Because you were told, it's so meokoka, tunakupatia three months, tunakupata tu apako bar. Because if we find you at the bar, you've backslid. Correct? Then two months later, you have a breakdown of conscience, then you go to church again. Oh God, forgive me, I'll never drink again. Right? So on Sunday, you get saved again. Then Friday, you sit at home remembering the drink. And you think that is the 
Christian journey. So that's what we've been told. So you're constantly grading yourself. That's what you think you are called to do. Now, I read last week Paul in Philippians say that I press on to take hold of that which Christ took hold of me. Are we together? Counting everything as rubbish, I press on to hold and to grasp what Christ took hold of me to grasp. Okay? Now, that's an interesting mind shift. Because Paul is speaking and he say that when Christ saved me, there was a thing he wanted to do with me. Okay? My job is to cooperate with him to get that thing. His job is to correct my flaws as I get there. Because let's understand who is the refiner? Sindio, who is the porter? Can a pot make itself? Therefore, the focus of the pot can only be to carry the water. Yes, that's not making sense. It is not the focus of the pot to build itself. We've reversed it. The pot is busy looking at itself. It's busy being sin conscious. It's busy with its faults. Sindio, question, if I have sacrificed myself to God, how can I fix me? Now, I know what the scripture you are thinking. Uh, the one that says, work out your salvation with fear, have you ever read the next verse? Uh, find it and read it. Find it and read it as I go to my first scripture. <laughs> find it. From his mouth goes forth a sharp sword with, with which he can smite and afflict the nations. He will shepherd and control them with a staff a scepter of iron, and he will tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath and indignation of God the Almighty. Okay? Now, you know, this scripture is very interesting because there's another scripture that says, lest I come against you and fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Right? And now, your imagination is when Jesus comes, he'll have a sword in his mouth, so he'll go Fighting like. Can you imagine him fighting? <laughs> and what I find funniest is there's artists who've actually tried to draw this. Now I want you to understand something. The purpose of being alive. The purpose of you getting saved is a principle called rulership. Are we together? You were born, created, sanctified, saved, and converted into the kingdom for the singular purpose of dominion. Can we understand? So Christ is giving you an example of how to rule. And he's saying in your mouth, he is put a sword. So you're supposed to be like Jesus. So this is you. Okay? He's saying your mouth should be like a sword. In your hands should be a scepter of iron. And on your feet you should tread upon the enemies of God. And you're like, oh really? Okay? Let me prove it to you that it's talking about you. So, let's go to Isaiah. The next verse. Listen to me, all isles and coastlands, and hearken you peoples from afar. The Lord has called who? Capital M or small, small M? Who is Isaiah uh, talking to? He's talking about isles and coastlands and peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. 
from the body of my mother he has named my and he has made my mouth like a sharp you whose mouth So we need to understand what a lion is. A lion is the one who when he speaks judgment comes upon the earth. A lion is a person who knows how to rule with an iron scepter. And he knows how to tread upon the enemies of his God underfoot. My question to you then, have you met a Christian like that? <laughs> Are you a Christian like that? Gaston. This is who we are. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he has kept me close and concealed me. Okay? Now, when God considers you and thinks about you, does he think about someone who needs rent or does he think of a weapon? Hmm, let's change dimensions here. Because most of you, the only thing God knows about you is a beggar. Oh God, I want rent. Oh my God. You know those ones? A lady got really offended at me when I used to attend prayer meetings once upon a time. And I noticed this one lady, she would cry every prayer meeting. And I'm like, why are you always so sad? Which father is this? Can you imagine if your son came to you Ken, all the time? Oh, daddy. Oh, yeah. well, that's prayer, right? That's prayer. Our idea of kujificha kwenye mwamba is not to become strong. It's so that we can stay there forever. Hello? But look at what he's saying. This is God's mind concerning Isaiah. God's mind concerning Isaiah is that his mouth is a sharp sword that he is a hidden, polished arrow. What does that mean? He is an arrow that has been prepared to pierce the heart of the enemy. That's what it means. So my question is, these Christians whose prayer is to bind the enemy, how are you an arrow? What are you an arrow for? Are we together? So a proper Christian is the one who understands that he is an arrow. He also understands that he is a son. Because uh, Proverbs says that sons are like a quiver full of arrows. So God is saying, you are my son. That means to be God's son is to be an arrow ready to pierce the enemy. It says when the enemy is at the gate, the sons shall contend. Sindio? So my question is, what is your response when there is an enemy at the gate? That's when you start singing, hide me now. Yeah. That's the time when Christians are supposed to contend. Let's continue. And the Lord said to me, you are my servant Israel, who strive with God and with men and prevail, in whom I will be glorified. Please understand. In who will God be glorified? If you do what? 
if you prevail, if you conquer, if you do what? Prevail and conquer. You see, praising God is not the 15 to 30 minutes of hallelujah to mwimbie. That's not proper glorification and praise. I used to find it so weird that our prayers, you know, because we were told acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. So in adoration, what you would say is, I glorify you, God. Okay, let's pause and think about it. What have you just said? Okay, if he asked, if he posed you there and asked you how. Yeah. Let me not even touch worship. Because when you say, I worship you, and God asks you, how? Who has an answer? This is why keep telling Christians, if we went back to the truth, we would never have Sunday services again. Because the idea of God being glorified is an activity where you've wrestled with man and wrestled with God and have over this is proper Christianity. Stop telling me a testimony because you did not sin. What have you overcome? Because not sinning brings you to the neutral point. You've done nothing. You've not stolen? Zero. You've not lied? Zero. Good. What is one? Guys, are we together? So, the Bible is clear that you are his servant you are the spiritual Israel who has strived with God, with men, and prevail. Prevail. Only then is God glorified. Guys, are we together? So God did not save you so you can be nice. God saved you to rule. Are we together? Now, other than your bed sitter, what do you rule? Because it does not make sense to me that if your God is true and his word is true, that the only conquering you have in your life is conquering in prayer. The only breakthrough you have is we were praying at night and it was heavy. It's going to feel Nika to break through. Satukomba sana. Pakatuka break. That's the only breakthrough you know. And then after that breakthrough, ukaomba pesa ya kwenda home. Which breakthrough is that? Tulizane maswali. You see, let me explain to you. I was proficient at what I'm telling you. Praying until you break through. Hey, my friend. Hey. My friend, we used to pray in tongues. You flip to English, Swahili. And you're about to sleep, you take a walk. My friend, so that Nikienda could preach the next day on Sunday. He's a Chalo is here. Ebu tell them to kifanya ivi. You remember those days? I did those things. And like I've told you over and over again, people fell down stood up, and were the same. Just slightly dirtier. (laughs) 
Do you understand? So, you know, people think that the reason I discredit such activities is because I was not successful. My friend, Pentecostal preaching, ha! Where my nikuana marisanga someone bill altar call. Kulkwanga na altar call. Kila mutu wana kam. So umenda moi forces academy. Eh? I used to be a competition between me and a pal of mine. We, 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 our idea was trying new styles. <laughs> like, sasa, tutaguza watu, uko. <laughs> eh? I love, you know, you do it and then you pause. Tunona. <laughs> So we did these things. So do not think we don't teach these things because we were not proficient in that season. Ken unacheka. Where Ken kwanza nge? Receive. Unenda na koti. You understand? And then we would hold <laughs> I've lost my <laughs> I don't want it back. So we used to have breakthrough service, miracle service, correct? And we'd call people and we'd pray for them. And yes, we saw some miracles. But by and large, I would still have to hold a miracle service in the next three months. So I used to ask myself, which miracles are this I'm doing? Because Jesus rarely did repeat, rewind miracles. Eh? So if I had to do it twice, what did I really do? Other than make you feel the V. You know, that, that was the talk of town. I remember when my pal and I were holding a miracle service, it was the talk of campus. Troubles. Talk of campus. Hey, our savings. Because oh, you should have seen how people used to see us walking on the streets of, hey, you guys oh, just walking and people are like, oh, that's a guy, that's a guy. But week after week, month after month, I have to do the miracle service again. So what was I doing? It's because we've not understood the principle of rule. You need to understand that until you get to the point of rulership, God cannot be glorified. Allow me to sidetrack a little bit and tell you, you are not created to praise God. You are created for God's praise. What is it to be created for God's praise? It is like this. God is your coach. And you are who won the World Cup? France. Okay? Yeah, you see how much I know about football. Versus Croatia. Right? Did the coach play? But did his team bring him praise? So in other words, it is the exploits you do. That, bring God, that brings God praise. So we do not need a praise and worship service. We need you to prevail. <laughs> you understand? You need to do stuff so that people can say, God wako nimnoma. That's accurate praise. Are you hearing me? That Christianity is defined by the fact that you are Jacob. And when you came into my house, I have prospered because of you. Your God must be real. You must be like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
we threw you to the lions and we threw you to the fire. In both of those things, what did you do? You conquered your God, Israel. Guys, are we together? That is accurate praise. Yeah. So if we are not conquering, we are not praising God. Yeah, okay, let me put it to you in, for example. If a very poor person tells you, has when him no masana, well, impact. When Uhuru tells you when him no masana, okay. Do you think God does not want kings to tell him yenim noma? He's the king of kings. So what is his honor? When a king worships him. Oh, see Christians like to say they are humble. If a shoe shiner shines your shoes, he's not being humble, he's working. If the president shines your shoes, he's being humble. Your humility cannot exist without a crown. You can't be humble when you have nothing. Eh? Well, with that humility, you have nothing. It is a status. Humility can only occur if you have a station, you can exit for someone else. Hey. So when it says, humble yourself before the Lord, what must have occurred? It must have been that God has lifted you, but you still have the capacity to go to him as though you have nothing. So do these songs we sing, I'm a humble African. No, you're not. You're just poor. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Let me tell you. If you eat what you can afford, are you being humble? You're just eating. But if you go to Chapo Madondo so you can fellowship with someone who can only afford Chapo Madondo, you are being humble. Sindio? So please understand, you cannot exercise Christianity without rulership. Christianity presupposes that you are a son of a king. That you practice and live in a place called dominion. Guys, are we together? So without conquering, what offering are you giving God? You know Christians are insane. Let me ask you a question. If what you have in your life, ni madeni, what are you tithing? You know people are crazy. But you go to a loan in a bank, and then you give a tithe. Of what exactly? It says you must tithe of your increase. So what have you increased? So imagine God's promise. He shall, I shall make you a loner. Not a loanee. Is that the right term? Yeah, I know lender, but I wanted to use the term loan. So that is loan. So I'll make you a lender, not a beggar. Not a lended. <laughs> Question. So if God's promise is to make you the one who gives, not the one who borrows, and you're borrowing, and then you give him thanks, how insane are you? Hey. No, if that's not insanity, what is? 
Guys, situonge ukweli. Yeah, you know guys are looking at me like what? Me ask honest question. Listen, if you go take a car loan, my friend, who's in letter 10%, go pay for your damn car. Me, I don't understand what's wrong with people. Sitaki pesayako. And I speak for the leadership here. Do we want it, Ken? Lily? My lovely missus? We don't want it. Because what God expects of you is for you to have a crown that you lay down because he is God. That's an accurate position of worship. Are you together? So being a lion is your birthright. That's what God created you to be. God created you literally that if you became a refugee in Somalia which has no infrastructure, God expects you to overcome in Somalia. God expects you that when he comes to check on you in Somalia after two years, those Somalis are saying, yes, sir. Yes, are we together? So, I want to take you through a journey. <laughs> Guys, are we together? Because this is very critical. Because we cannot build a community of dogs, of cowards, to And I'll show you why that community doesn't go anywhere. Are we together? Now, the first thing First thing, once you get into the light, and you've left Egypt, the first thing you must learn to deal with is a thing called hunger. Nja. Okay? This is where many Christians get stuck. It's called the wilderness of sin. Let's go to the next scripture. I want to show you something. This is in Exodus, Exodus chapter 16. And the whole congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness and said to them, all that would have died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt. Let me tell you something. It's a very strange statement. When they were in Egypt, who are they praying dies? The Egyptians, right? Now, who are they praying had died in Egypt? Themselves. Do you know what is the reason? You see, if hunger changes your mind, you're not ready to be a liar. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. 90% of Christians change their mind on what they are supposed to do based, not even on hunger, on the threat of hunger. No, it's very easy. You choose not to come to class or not because you are now. So, now think about it logically. You also it outside the education. Do you understand? You worship that calast money so much as though it can save. Well, okay, inke kwe naza kunua gunia ya maindi. Maybe, but to talk about breakfast, calas. Now I'll show you because I'll show you in Deuteronomy. When you sat by the flesh pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now, notice. Where have they decided their destination is? You brought us into this wilderness to kill us all with? Okay. Please notice that the journey from Egypt Canaan 
is approximately 11 days. Now, if you know how long the body can stay without food, it's approximately a month. So, these guys, by the way, at this point, had only had three, four days in the wilderness. So, at the equal life and death. Are we together? Now, here's something interesting. Now, here God causes manna to appear. I don't want to talk about manna today because... I don't want to talk about this story about manna because it's a longer story. Okay? So God causes manna to appear. And then verse 20 says, but they did not listen to Moses. Some of them left it until morning and it bred worms and became foul and stunk and Moses was angry with them. Now I want you to understand something. There, there's a duality here. There's the duality, number one, of why God causes you to hunger, which I will talk about now in Deuteronomy. But let me talk about manna. Okay? Manna, we know, represents the bread of life. Correct? Now, one of the biggest issues with the church today is they want leftover manna, which is one more thing about the dog I didn't tell you last week. Dogs like to hide bones. principle of a dog is they have no fresh revelation. They're always eating bones. Hmm. Yani ukitafuta ukita kujua ni mbwa bado unasoma revelation ya the year 2000. Yes, tuonge ukweli. And then when things get hard, you recycle. Mbwana singeza. So we need to be careful not to be disqualified because we do not know how to seek fresh bread every day. Are we together? One of the problems that we faced when Masterclass started is people came to Masterclass as though it's a seminar. You come to a class, you get taught wonderful things, and then you go home, and then your life returns to normal. See, that's how seminars work. Problem with master class is it's a seminar every week. Sindio? And we punch hard every? Do you know why? So that you may learn to seek manna every day. His word must be new to you every So my question is, when you wake up in the morning, how often do you seek truth? That I want to know something new. How many times? You see, even in your career, it's a problem I have with Africans. Ulimaliza degree two years ago. You're applying for a job. Sindio, what new thing has happened in your field today? Do you know? Do many Christians know? No. Because your idea is that I have finished. You, kuna ikitu in your head inaitwa kufika. Ndiyo unasemanga nimemaliza kusoma. That's the dumbest thing you ever said. Because let me tell you the truth. A true lion has the capacity to go hunting every day. Are we together? In other words, God's word, knowledge, and the increase of it must be so central in your life you look for it every day. See, in the morning when I rise, I will seek you. That's what you said. How do you seek God? Have you ever thought? Eh. Okay, let's ask a question. You know, Christians are interesting. How many have said they are seeking God? You, we all have. Uh, stop pretending. Yani, just cause. Okay, tell me how you sought him. Read your Bible. <laughs> God is only found in the illumination of your mind. It's the only time you find it. The only way you know you've had God is if you receive revelation. Please understand. 
this season for goda limtembelea nikasikia bibi because that's what christians want eh yes i went to the mountain i sought god then he came and i just felt peace okay and then eh no christians we miss you you did you ever hear god visit someone and was quiet ever in the bible So this this one where people practice where God comes and he doesn't talk to you which one is that which god You see we suffer from a very dangerous disease if you put much of the church in Elijah's cave they would have stopped at thunder at lightning we kulikuwa na thunder eh that's where Christians would have stopped. And that story would have been when I was in the cave, I had boom, boom. And then would be forever discovering what does, what do you think meant. That's what we'd be discussing. Because we have a bunch of Christians who do not know how to gather the manna. We have no discipline in us to constantly find revelation from God. Because God indeed is endless, correct? Limitless. So why is it that we think we can get to a point where we are satisfied of our knowledge of him? This is why we wake up every day and in our balls there's worms because you are trying to live a lion's life with a dog's habits. Are we together? So you cannot be a lion if you do not know what your diet is. Guys, are we together? You see, this is how you know you've got dog tendencies still. If the solution of your problems is anything but the word of God. If the answer to your prayer is a thing, you're still a dog. Let me explain to you. The solution to whatever you are seeking has got to always be what is the word of god if you're standing in the dock and the judge is about to judge you your worry should not be what will the judge say your worry should be what does my father in heaven say and when you hear that it should settle the matter oh You see sometimes you reach out and you're like please help me. Sindio. And then you are told I will pray. Sindio. Then you get offended. Now there is no deeper dog than that. Because my question is which is greater? The prayer to God or the money to your problem. Eh? Eh. Nimekupata lion or dog, let's compare. You see to a lion, to a son, what the father says is more important. She settles the matter. <laughs> Guys, are we together? Am I talking to myself? So you must be a lion. Check your diet. A lion eats meat. A dog eats bones hidden in the sands of time. 
The land is looking for fresh meat. In other words, you should wake up every day and say, God, it's not Wednesday, but where is my master class? Hey? That's how you should live. They are new every morning, right? Did you get them today? What is new in your life today? What is there revelation in your life today? What did God tell you today that you didn't know before? Now, what's your diet? Most of us, the way we know God is with us is we shall and come. Even Satanists get salaries, so no big deal. The differentiator is that a true lion eats the meat of the word. And they know the meat is not going to be fresh tomorrow. Means they have the discipline to hunt every day. You get? It also means that you have the discipline to wake up every day and to do that which feeds you every day. Discipline. That's the other attribute of a lion. Repetitive discipline. In other words, you have the ability to obey God continuously even when you think the results are not the way they're supposed to look like. You keep doing it. Is that how you are? No, I tell you Christians quit faster than a matchbox. Mawaka. Boah. Waka. But a lion knows, man, if I gotta eat, I gotta find this thing every day. See, that's my life. If you ask my friends, they'll tell you. Because that's what I do. And if I don't hear God for two days, me, I'm in panic, serious panic. And I don't mean hear God about I'll get a job, I'll get a promotion. Nah. It's hear God. It's hear God. Do you know? And then we, we, we discuss deep things with God. Now let me go to Deuteronomy because I need to show you the second principle. You shall honestly remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years. Okay? Shall remember. So it means the 40 years were supposed to teach you something, correct? Now what are you supposed to remember? To, that he took you through the wilderness to do what? To humble you and to prove you. To humble you and to? Now you need to understand. The reason I'm teaching this is I'm teaching something very important. My question has always been, why is it that in a setting such as this, there are those who've had breakthrough upon breakthrough, and then there are those who are the same since they came in? Okay, and they're not Alpha and Omega. But this is why. Reason number two, why you need to understand manna, is your wilderness experience is to humble you and to prove you. Now what is being proven? To know what is in your mind and okay. Let me tell you how it is, easy it is to know what is in your heart and mind. Let someone slap you. Have you ever realized how much you sound like Snoop Dogg? So the wilderness was designed to bring out what is in your heart and oh, you see me, I've learned. I've always thought that when I teach people see the sacrifice you make, the preparation and stuff like that. My friend, you wait until this preaching of yours leads them to a wilderness. 
That's when you see what is in their heart and <laughs> right? That's when people are like, ah, Ikijimutu. Because when pain comes, it has the inadvertent way of causing your stuff, your issues, your mess to rise to the surface. Not because God didn't know it. No, no. He knew it, that's why he allowed it to happen. So that your mess can float. So that your bitterness can come out. You're angry at God. Right? So that you know you have curse words. You know, me, I learned this lesson. I've told you this story before. Me had forgotten that I have fear for heights. I'd forgotten. Because this is me. I can't remember the last time I was afraid. So, and after all, I get on planes, I get on whatever. So I got on this kiddie ride, banana ride. You know how it goes up and goes down. And by the way, I was listening to a sermon, a very powerful sermon, earphone. And then we are, I'm with my wife. And we get into this thing. And it was, I didn't even think about it because. It was the last ticket, and the kids had gone on another ride, so we were like, okay, let's just use this ticket. So we got on the thing, strapped ourselves in, and I'm listening to my someone, and I'm all hallelujah, you know, it's born again. And like a chuma comes, and then the wilderness started. Started nicely. Then by the fourth time, it was, you know how you're seeing the ground vertically? My friend, I swore like a sailor. I insulted everybody. I threatened the operator if they do not stop that machine at that moment, I would sue them. I was so proud, I asked them, do you know who I am? And by the the insults I was giving them was an Eminem song. And not the nice one. And somewhere in the middle, because it felt like I was there for an hour, somewhere in the middle after I was angry at the operator and angry at Agnes for not telling me that I would die in this thing, I got angry at God. I'm like, an entire prophet, why didn't you warn me? What kind of God are you? Why have you brought me here to die? Oh, that I would have died in the wilderness. <laughs> but that's what happens. That pain has that attribute of bringing out what you've been hiding. Correct? In fact, most of the time when you're in pain is when you think about sinning. Yeah, that's how people are. A tasker would be nice about now. Nice cold tasker. Pain. So it takes you through the wilderness so that you can experience pain. So when you come to me and you're in your wilderness experience, my wish is that you will die well. Banas if you say. I do not pray shortcut prayers for wilderness. I don't. What for? If God has chosen it's good for you to go through a process, who am I to stop it? (laughs) Now, after it exposes what is in your heart, the second test is whether you will keep his commandments or not. Now, I need to give you revelation behind this. I've talked about the sin part. That's easy. But a lot of the time when you're going through the wilderness and you're hungry, 
the hunger causes you to question the journey. Do you understand? That if, if, if you're in the wilderness and the wilderness is you have no money for fuel or for a taxi or for a bus ride, the hunger that comes is to keep you from going to town where your destiny is because, my friend, so the reason the hunger comes together with the promise is God is checking to see whether you will do what he commanded you, whether you have what it takes or not. So the prophetic word has a propensity of coming in when you have no capacity to keep it. This is why you must learn to deal with hunger. That a lot of the time when God says, oh, I've called you to be an industrialist. It is a time you can't even repair your bicycle. Because God is checking to see whether you understand the principle that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that God has. Meaning that you must always make a choice between the bread you need to live and the word of God you need to live. You get it? Here's the trick. But if you find yourself without bread, that means you are supposed to do a report and electricity went out. Okay? And you don't have money for tokens. Okay? What you need to find out is this electricity is bread. What did the word say? Send your CV. So what do you do? You begin to do what God told you to do even if you have to go beg, steal, borrow a computer to do it. Don't steal. <laughs> do you understand? You've got to be the kind of person. Let me tell you how God taught me this. And again, Charlo is here, so he's my witness. When I was coming up in ministry, God would say, by the way, Menenda Baringo, Menenda Kisumu, okay? We're going to preach. A hundred percent of the time I had zero bomb. Okay? And a hundred percent of the time there were 14 people going with me, isn't you? And we'd be in a meeting the day before. They'd be like, Tunanda. I'm like, eh, Tunanda. Kunado, eh, Kunado. Kutane skesho sangapi? Sambili. Tunatoke a stage sangapi? Sambili. Tunanda. Tunanda. You know why? It's God's job to supply. That's the man alone. See, God tells you, I've called you to go to Russia to preach. Okay? And you have no money to go. Can't pay for a ticket, nothing. You go to a map. Major world map. Mona Kenya is here. Unoneza tembea kupite Egypt. When the Europe Okay? Russia. That's how you do it. See, there was one time I wanted to go back to South Africa. My mom didn't have money. Okay? And I really wanted to go back. So, 
19 years old, I got on a bus to go to South Africa with half the money. Okay? So I got from Kenya to Dar es Salaam and then translating Kenya shillings to Tanzania shillings is hard mathematics. But even harder is translating Tanzania shillings to kwacha. My friend will appear a person. <laughs> and you're in a bus. So this guy gave me so much money, I thought it was a lot of money. Until I paid my next bus. Then I was left with what I was told was enough to buy bread. And I landed in Lusaka. And I told God, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I've been told this money is enough to buy bread, so I'll buy bread. You know, because in a foreign land. So I bought bread and I put it in my bag and I sat. And I told God, so here it is. I'm halfway between Kenya and South Africa. You better come through for me. Okay? Now, the trouble with Lusaka is their English is so-so. Okay? And, well, they don't speak Swahili either. So all these guys are coming to me speaking different languages. I'm like, Lord, the sign will be someone who can speak English. And this guy comes up to me and he says, my brother, how are you? I say, ah, God is here. So I tell him, listen, I need a phone. I need to call my dad to tell him I'm stuck. Sure enough, he brought a phone and I dialed South Africa. And I told my dad, I'm stuck. Now at the time, believe it or not, there was no Western Union in <laughs> Zambia. So he's like, how do I even send money to you? Okay? He said, oh wait. Where I am right now, my colleague is from Zambia. Okay? So he said, let me talk to him, I'll call you back. Okay? So he talks to his colleague, he tells him, ah, my sister is in fact right next there. So I'll talk to her, then he can stay at her house until we find a way of sending him money. As it happened, the sister was one of the top government officials. So I was driven back left to this posh estate where I lived for a week, being catered for hand and foot. And I was like, landing in trouble with this God is nice. Okay? Now you'd think I learned my lesson. Because 10 years later, Mimi ni nani? The same guy. So there's a deal we are supposed to do in Tanzania. Okay? Big deal, contract for the companies that now own in Tanzania. And my partners pull out. Okay? But me, I'm that guy. I'm in the plane. I'm in Tanzania. I don't even have money to book a hotel. So I go to a hotel room and I tell the hotel guy, listen, I'll pay you once a week. I'm here for a month. For some reason, he believed me. He believed me. So this is how I used to live. It's in the bed and breakfast. You have to be very smart. You have breakfast at the last minute possible. That way you've solved breakfast and lunch. Okay? You need to be very clever. Then, you need to have something called the groundnuts. You see how your parents used to tell you, kikula, utashiba, utakula? Very important lesson because it's true. <laughs> you eat, 
groundnuts. So, now you don't eat in the hotel. In Tanzania, kuna mtu anaitwa Mama Ntilie. Okay? They cook at street corners. So you make a friend of Mama Ntilie. And they'll give you a meal for like 50 bob. Okay? Now, the person I'm negotiating with drives a Porsche 911. So imagine my hungry self <laughs> in his office in a suit doing this deal. Now, if I was a Nambi Pambi Christian, people would be like, oh, I'm so sad. Oh, I can't do it. Nah, my friend, they never smelt brokenness on me, not once. Not once. Went there, shaved, clean, nice. To do the deal. Negotiated for a month. Every time I was going there was a miracle. Just call again in Nairobi. I'm like, babe, kuna client amelipa? Hey, amelipa how much? 2,000. I to me 1,000. So I lived for a whole month. So that you know God is faithful. The contract was signed the day of my flight. When it was signed, I didn't have money to get to the airport. So I told God, simple deal, I'm doing lifts. So I get out of the office uh, where I've signed the deal. I'm like, can one of your drivers drop me somewhere? Yeah, yeah, they're going towards town. Town. So I, as I'm on my way to town, because town is still away from the airport, I'm like, okay, God, so next move, next move. He's like, remember this guy you met? Hey, he's going to Kenya, call him. I'm like, where? Casey. Bwana Casey VP. And kosalama bwana maki, you copy. You copy him, genius. You can't end up in the airport. Ah, then don't talk size in Joe. Ah. My friend, back left, BMW 7 Series airport. Okay? You see, when it says he will provide a way, you need to have the capacity to see it. And what blinds your capacity to see it is your stupidity in worry. Let me tell you something. Poverty lowers your IQ and worry kills it. Let me explain to you what I mean. If you hold yourself in high esteem, despite your hunger, you will still be able to make a million shillings deal because that's who you are. Am I, am I making sense? So the wilderness is there to show you that no matter what the devil brings your way, bring it because I'm going to walk all over you. Hey, I'm all by myself. I thought that was really encouraging. I shall encourage myself. <laughs> the wilderness was there to show you that no matter how much hunger was thrown at you, it never changed your direction. It never changed where God is taking you. But if you become these people and he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you, that he might make you recognize and personally know that man does not live by bread alone, but by but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Okay? We've talked about that. Your clothing did not become old upon you, no, and, and, and of, or your feet swell in 40 years. No, and no also in your minds and hearts that as a man disciplines and instructs his son, so the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you. So if you are a son... How you know you are a son 
is when God shows up and you appear in a wilderness. That's how you know you are a son. Yes, are we together? So what is a lion? A lion is that one animal that is okay in the wilderness. You're just fine. You're just fine. You're not crying, writing sad status updates, you know, remembering mental health awareness two months after the fact. <laughs> not the time. It's good to have mental health awareness, but not all the time. Okay, let's continue. Now, listen. So I've told you why the wilderness exists. Okay? Now, can I tell you the people who get stuck in the wilderness and die in the wilderness, how they act like? Hmm. And the people grumbled. Sound familiar? My life is so hard. But they, let me ask you a question. When you say life is hard, you're comparing it to what? If there's something hard, there must be a soft. So your life is hard as compared to? Death. <laughs> <laughs> and they deplored their hardships. What did they do? They hated hardship which was evil in the ears of the Lord. Yes. Think about it. They grumbled and they hated hardship. And God considered that evil. So how many Christians do we have if that is evil? Huh? <laughs> And please read the Bible correctly. In fact, I will not even be able to finish this thing. And the people grumbled and deplored their hardship. They hated it. And God says it was evil in his ears. I'm describing people who died in the wilderness. So if you want to stay in the wilderness, fast, be a grumbler and complainer and whiner. My life is so hard. You know, Nongo Patu, Nombatu Mungus, Kumaya and Takona breakthrough. Can you say, imagine my mom and then my dad and then you know my boss and then the part of promotion and then you know I've applied 70 times and then you know. Mm. Yeah, that's your prayer life. So, can you imagine what God is hearing in his ear? Evil. Burn as if you were son. It says it was evil in his ears. Second thing they did is they hated hardship. Now I don't know which Christian would survive this test. They hated hardship. Count it all joy when you go through all manner of trials. So a lion counts its joy when they go through hardships. You see, until you start having fun with that season, it ain't ending. Guys, Guess what? It is not Aishi until you learn not to grumble and not to hate it. And the, the Lord had it. His anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and devoured those in the outlying parts. Think about it. You know the things God punished in the Old Testament are very interesting. They're not the things you thought. Hey. 
But let me ask you a question. Is God's anger against you? Because you hate your life? You hate how hard it is? Well, you know, my life has been so hard. Me, when I was in class 8, I didn't have anyone to support me. And when I'm ready to form four, no one was there to support me. And I come poor, I sponsored myself. And then now here I am looking for a job myself. My life is so hard. My nigga, shut up. All of us have stories. Would you like to tell story? So why are you busy thinking yours is special? Oh, you know, my mom didn't hug me. My friend, my mom didn't breastfeed me. It's true story. True story, she didn't. My sister is here. She'll tell you. So if you excuse you are not hugged, what is mine? Now you know. <laughs> huh? Can I tell you, everyone here has a story. Because everyone must go through the wilderness. So stop thinking your story is nice and stop trying to motivate us because you made it. We people are just insane. Team hashtag I overcame. <laughs> when you think the rest of us didn't? I had malaria for two years in the wilderness. Friend, Forgetting what is past. This way I don't come tell you here to show you pictures of the primary school we went to and how my mom and my sister and I used to live in a one bedroom, the house. What for? When I live in a one bedroom house now. You know, if you think we've not gone through life, please you remember when a wife and a husband and their three very non potty trained children moved into our house. Do you remember? And for two years, my friend, Shaila Lakwa couch, and the only you only sleep in one position. You don't see me giving you a testimony for how God has lifted me. You know, man. Forget those things. Together. So he called upon the name of the Lord Moses does and the burning ends among them. Okay? Right? Notice these people have not changed. Uh, so principle number one of people who do not make it is they hate problems and they mumble and grumble. So if you're asking, when is my breakthrough coming? It's very simple. If you're still complaining, it's not. Professor, yeah. It is not coming. When is my promotion coming? <laughs> it's not. The day you stop complaining. <laughs> hey, do you know, God, God told me, was it, I think two years ago, and he told me, by the way, history of mumble and grumble in Isha Leo. I was like, but God is like, hey. You mean? Because we're we together. You know me, this. <laughs> you see, it is so easy to live life like a puppy. <laughs> so easy. Now, there's another group of people. They're called the mixed multitude. Okay? Very dangerous people. Among them, the rabble who followed Israel from Egypt began to last greatly for familiar and dainty food. Now, interestingly, who is craving the mixed multitude? Next sentence. And the Israelites swept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? Yeah. 
What is God saying? This is strange. First, the mixed multitude are not Israelites. But what they desire affected the Israelites. Hmm, let me explain to you. You see, when you go to town and you see a chick roughly your age, your size, in a car that is not your age and size. <laughs> okay? And you start missing. Come here, you want a car. Eh? You know, when you meet that person who used to be number 35 out of 36, because number 36 was absent. <laughs> and they're doing better than you. And then you start craving meat. You know? What we do? Okay? Uh, to put it closer home, people who come to master class and they say, but hey, mono kuna songs. I miss how it was in in Egypt. And now start putting pressure. Now you start missing. Okay? You broke up with your boyfriend. Then you meet mixed multitudes, mixing and mingling, looking happy on Instagram. Hashtag Bay. Then you go home and you miss the ex you dumped. <laughs> are you seeing how these examples are real? Okay? Now, we ate, remember the fish we ate freely in Egypt without cost. The cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. By now, our soul... Oh, it's dried up. Remember, these are the guys who've just been burnt. Eh? There is nothing at all in the way of food to be seen. Eh, there is no food. But this manna. So which one? There is no food or this manna? Mm. But can I explain you how this to you what how this happens? You've been living in your house. You've been eating. But you've been jobless. Okay? Now you're tired. Like, oh, I'm missing a job. I remember when I used to have a job. I used to have a supermarket. I used to have a troll. I used to have a troll. I used to have a troll. Has that ever happened to you? Now you know you're not getting out of the wilderness. Because what is their desire? They've forgotten that by some miracle, manna had all the major food groups. They've forgotten that. They've forgotten that a few books before in Exodus, they were so grateful with this manna, they, they, they were keeping it overnight. That's how important it was. But now God has been faithful, consistent. He's fed you. He's clothed you. But now, there's no spice in my life. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's, not just, it's not enough. Yet you forget that your broke self, what has happened to you? You've walked, you've eaten, You've done everything you've ever needed to do without having that job and now you're bitter. And now you're complaining. Now you're like, God, why am I not just like the others? Hmm. You're still a chihuahua. But now our soul, our strength is dried up. There is nothing at all. But where we put this manna of like coriander seed and its appearance was like that of the bdellium, perhaps a precious stone. The people went about and gathered it and, uh, and ground it into meals and beat it into mortars and boiled it. And when the dew fell on the cup in the night, and Moses had the people weeping throughout their families, every man at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly. 
And in the eyes of Moses, it was evil. What, what was God angry about? He was angry at a people who could not recognize that he was sustaining them. Okay? And this is, comes the most dangerous part. I've got five minutes, my goodness. And Moses said to the Lord, why have you dealt ill with your servants? And why have I not found favor in your sight? That you lay the burden of all these people on me. Please never let your preacher say that about you. You're a burden. You know how you become burdened? It's very simple. The most burdensome people in a preacher's life are the ones who cannot see money. I complain with an alalanga nja. Me, I've seen it. It's a thing of beauty, by the way. As you tell me, literally, no na kunishinda, and I'm being alalanga nja. Because they can't recognize mana. Are we together? So Moses is like, how oh, are you? For years, but that this was not years, they've been fed. Their shoes have not worn out. And they're still complaining. Still complaining. This is a burden. I'm a choker, Moses says. Have I conceived all these people? Are they my children? Are they my children? I said it on purpose. <laughs> Have I brought them forth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom? As a nursing father carries the sucking child to the land which you swore to their fathers to give them, why should I get meat? To, where should I get meat to give all these people? For they will weep before me day and night, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone because this burden is too heavy for me. Okay, I want to skip this. We'll come back to the thing. I want to go to the place where. God says some things. I want to go to the place where they they um they are there. Okay. But a whole month until you are satiated and vomit it up violently and comes out of your nostril and is disgusting to you because you have rejected and despised the Lord who is among you. How did they reject God? They rejected God by failing to recognize what God did for them every day. How you reject God. Because every day in your life I look at all of you. There's no one who's looking malnourished, homeless. But if you're still grumbling and complaining and mumbling, you've rejected God. Are we together? You totally rejected God. And have wept before him, saying, why did we come out of Egypt? But Moses said, the people among whom I am are 600,000 men. How will you feed all of them? Okay? Um, so he goes out to the people, go out, 70 men of the elders, and God puts his spirit on them. We'll come back to this next week. Please remind me. Okay? And then they start prophesying. Uh, are you envious? Uh, and they went forth a, a wind from the Lord. And brought quails from the sea and let them fall so they flew low beside the camp about a day's journey on this side and on the other side all around the camp about two cubits above the ground. Okay? Cubit is a length of a man's hand, I think. So like that much of quail falls around the camp. Quails. You want to come look at quail legs? Yes. So they're having quail meat, very healthy meat. Okay? And the people rose all that day and all night and all the next day and caught and gathered the quails. Mm. Now, pause, 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 pause. Isn't this your prayer request answered? You see, that's how Christians operate. This to them is an answered prayer. This, in fact, that day they had testimonies in the house that I cried and begged and complained about my situation. Prayer changes things. 
Sindio. Hasn't prayer. Pray until something mm, happens. Hallelujah. When you go into the closet and call down the power of heaven. Where there was no meat. Meat shall fall from the heavens. That's what we teach. Careful now. Careful. He who gathered the least gathered ten omas and they spread them out for themselves round about the camp to cure them by dry. Yet the meat was yet between their teeth. Before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote them with a very great plague. My friend, miracles are not a sign of God's happiness with you. This is one of the most dangerous miracles you can ever have. When God gives you the foolishness of your heart. See, a lion does not beg for comfort in the wilderness. A lion has one purpose, to conquer it. That's the purpose of a lion. When you get into a circumstance, you're not busy whining, my boss is bad, the environment is bad. No, 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 no. A lion is like, you know what? Let's do this. Understand? A lion is focused. God got me out of Egypt, and I'm in a process, I'm in a wilderness. What we're going to do, for as long as God provides manna, we're going to keep walking. Okay? We're going to keep walking. And we're not going to stop until we get what God took us out of Egypt for. You understand? So stop this. Oh, I'm not comfortable. I'm not okay. I'm not living in the right house. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, stop it. The purpose is I have a journey. Forgetting that which is past. Forgetting onions, leeks, and shopping carts that were full. Okay? Forgetting that your neighbor has a bigger car, has two cars, has three cars. Forgetting that your colleague in campus now is married with kids. Forgetting all those things. You must set your eyes on what? On what God promised you in the first place. Because you know what happens when you start eating quails in the wilderness? You start liking the wilderness. You start liking it. You start adjusting. Wilderness life. Hashtag. Start adjusting. And there are people who are so good at it that their testimonies are wilderness living. Every day. They never conquer. You see, a lion, when it's in a fight, it roars. It's, it's nature. A dog Just, just, you know, it's interesting how if you hit a dog just right, how it's bravery. Just, you, you just need to hit it once very well. You try hitting a lion. Do you understand? So what needs to happen? The purpose of this series of classes I'm going to take you through is we're going to stop this nonsense of having deep, yeah, deep, master class me deep, and then your life is shallow. Yeah. Whether I'm serious, 
What is the point of us coming here and learning deep things of God? And your prayer life is still... What's the point? What is the point? My friends, can you apply walk in the light? Come out of the darkness. Can you apply that? Can you apply stopping yourself from being determined by your stomach? That now you're not doing the things of God because you got, you know, let me tell you. If there's something that irritates me to the core is when God tells you to do something, then you give me excuses the next day. God help when you apply for a job. One week later, Makulza, did you apply? Only I'm going to go home. Lose can go slap. It's just that it's a crime. That's the biggest foolishness you can have. Let me guarantee you something. If an opportunity is from God, expect wilderness. So, and the wilderness comes to test and prove you. So, when it brings out the bad characters in you, then you should know what you need to deal with, correct? But it also comes to see whether you know it is not capital that will start a business comes to check whether you know it is not money that will get you where you're going. It's not your family, it's not your brothers, it's not your friends, it's God. It comes to check whether you know how to seek God every morning. That's what he's checking for. That's what the wilderness is there for. It's coming to check whether you are grateful for the fact that despite you've not had capacity, God has kept you. It's coming to check whether you're evil. What is being evil? It's coming to check whether you hate hardship. Yeah, I thank God, and not because I'm better. Because, man, I, I hated hardship, man. I told you how many times I told God Kwenda Kabisa because of hardship, you would be surprised. I've done it so many times in my life. I thank God I'm growing up to that point where I'm at the bring it point. The way you wake up and you genuinely tell God, I can lose everything, just don't let me lose you. Because you finally understand that, you know what? If I just have God, I'm fine. If I can hear him, if I can wake up and I've gotten the worst news ever, company is downsizing, the salary is going to be cut, it's going to be late. You know, you had a contract and you had a promise and it's not being renewed. And as you hear that report, if you could just be the person for one second who says, wait, what does God say about this? What does God say? And if you're that person where what God says is more real to you than the circumstance of your life, then you're on your way to being a liar. Then you're in your way. If you do not do these things, my friend, for 40 years, you know this is the most amazing thing, for 40 years, these people who God was waiting for to die, they saw miracles. They woke up every day, 
and there was a cloud. To keep them from the sun, they had God air conditioning. And at night, there was fire to keep them warm. And when they woke up in the morning, there was manna. So God can sustain you with miracles and you never touch the promise. <laughs> it's the most dangerous thing about the Bible. God can sustain you. Write this down. God can sustain you with miracles and you never touch the promise. He has no problem doing it. So you must be careful with this thing called wilderness. You must purpose to get out. The first thing you need to learn to get out is you can't be a dog. You can't be Nambi Pambi, you know. Always is everything is so hard and you hate hardship and you're always binding. It does not work like that. That's no breakthrough. Breakthrough, by the way, is not getting out of the wilderness. Can I tell you what breakthrough is? You've broken through when wilderness no longer affects you. And the fact that you've not been promoted, your business has not started, stops affecting you. And you're like, you know what, it's okay. Because my profit margin is God. My promotion is God. So if I have you, we're good. That's what you need to get to. That's why Paul says, I have learned to have plenty and to lack. To be lifted up and to be abased. We are fine. You see, I have had to learn that I go to certain buildings and I'll find watchmen and they've watched me on TV and I'm the best of friends. They'll go to places where they have no idea who I am. And I've learned to be okay with either. To be the same person. That's how you become a lion. So the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah is not the one that runs away from the cross. It's the one the cross can't keep dead. Hear what I just said? It's not the one Runs away from problem. He's the one who the problem can't keep. Mm, the gates of hell cannot contain. It should happen. You should not be worried of a jail cell. You should be singing praises in jail. Because you know you're growing a little bit fatter. Just a little bit bigger. And the doors will open for you. Do you understand what I mean? This is a lion. We cannot build master class unless you become lions. 